This video was sponsored by Omaze. Hyenas are one of the dominant predators in all of Africa. They also have a childhood that makes me think someone upstairs had some very real beef with the doormat of Lion King. And it's one of those things where the more you look at it, the worse it gets. So, let's talk about it. Let's talk about why if you start the game of life as a hyena, you might be better off uninstalling. Now, hyenas are special in that they're one of the few carnivores that are born with their eyes open. In comparison, lion cubs are born Stevie wondering about the world around them. And wolf pups can't see or hear for the first two weeks of their existence. And unlike other carnivores, hyena cubs' muscles are ready to go as soon as they come out. The problem is hyena cubs are also born with a full set of sharp teeth and the full intent to use them. Cause the moment hyena cubs are born, they'll immediately start running phase with their siblings. And this isn't that cute Discovery Channel play fighting kind of thing, nah, they're actively trying to become an only child in the worst way possible. It's so bad that one in every four hyena cubs born get Mufasa before they ever leave the den. One in four, I want you to remember that number, it's gonna be important later. And it's the female cubs that are the most homicidal. Cause female cubs are flushed with higher levels of testosterone than the males. And since hyena society is feminism on steroids, a female cub that flatlines her own sister has one less rival to worry about down the road. Which is why when hyenas start life, it is literally, and I know this word gets abused, but it is literally on sight. In some occasions, older cubs will gang up on the weaker sibling and then turn them into past tense while the mother's not paying attention. And to somehow make it worse, because it always does, the mother hyena's milk is actually really high in nutrients. Now why would that be a problem? Unlike lions and wild dogs, mother hyenas can actually afford to leave their cubs alone for several days, even up to a week to go hunt, since the cubs can live off the milk. Leaving these murder mongooses unsupervised means a tired mother can come back from a long hunt only to find out one of her cubs got turned into a hashtag by one of its siblings. And that's why for every three cute hyena pictures you find on Google, there's a cub that didn't live long enough to get its picture taken because it got put in a pack by its own sister. And that's assuming it survived the jihad of being born. You knew. You knew this was coming. Because female hyenas have a... I'ma call it a Richard. You know, because Richard's short for... Yeah, you get it. They have a pseudo Richard that is really just an oversized, uh, it's obliterous. Do you see what guidelines makes me do? The only problem is the obliterous gets obliterated since the hyena birthing process involves splitting the Richard in half. Not only is it a living hell for the mother, something like 60% of firstborn hyena cubs suffocate inside the mother's giant blitz. And the fact that that right there was a completely factual sentence tells me that nature has a very personal prejudice towards them. But at least with Squid Game, there's a cash prize at the end. With them, the only thing they win is the right to keep living. Actually, now that I think about it, that's kind of the whole point of Squid Game. What would you even do with all that money? Like if someone hands you $100,000, no strings attached, what would be your first move? Well, you could invest in an index fund, open up a retirement savings account, do the whole 401k thing. Well, if you were responsible, you probably would. I would just dip out to Tanzania and go on a month-long safari to watch Animal Planet in real life, but that's just me as a person. Anyway, you do have the opportunity to win $100,000 and use it any way you want. Any way you want that's legal. Omaze gives one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while also donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Which means the nonprofits they support can spend less time, effort, and hair follicles stressing about how to raise money and more time, you know, helping. Basically, Omaze is doing this thing, right? Where donating $10 enters you for a chance to make your wallet $100,000 heavier. And all those donations go to Journey House. Journey House supports former foster children and probation youth, basically the kinds of kids society often lets fall through their cracks and helps them live successful and independent lives. As real talk, there's always going to be a kid like me that didn't get the support I got, didn't have the resources that I had, and, let's be honest, didn't get as lucky as I got. Well, your donation will help the house provide emotional support and guidance, along with financial aid to help get them through school. So, for your chance at 100 big ones and to support Journey House, go to omaze.com slash cashgeo and you'll be helping them help at-risk youth. Well, at-risk human youth. These guys start life very much at risk, but there's no helping them. Which is why hyena cubs come out the womb ready for war. But hyenas are not the only animals born on malicious timing. But probably no animal takes sibling rivalry worse than sharks. You remember Finding Nemo? Of course you do, because there's no way in hell I'm that old. So you probably remember these three sharks. You got Bruce the Great Caucasian, Anchor the Hammerhead, and Chum is actually a Mako shark. But two out of three of them are probably cannibals. Because Great White and Mako sharks first learn how to hunt inside the mother, and they do this by swimming around the uterus and eating their less developed brothers and sisters. So even though they can technically have up to 20 siblings, they do everything in their power to make sure they come out the first and only born. And of course, they're not the only ones that spawn camp their own kind. Sand tiger sharks actually have two uteri, and both will produce a whole mess of eggs. But in the end, only two pups are born, one from each uterus. That's because the first Bundy fetus to develop will eat all the embryos in his mother's womb while taking out any unfertilized eggs as a twisted dessert. By the time the sand shark is officially a part of the census, it's already three feet long thanks to a diet of his brothers and sisters. There's even a name for this friendly fire, and it's Adelphophagy. 
which literally translates to eating one's brother. And you want to know how we even found this out? A veteran shark researcher was examining a very much pregnant sand tiger when he reached his hand inside her, as one does, only to be bitten by the unborn baby shark inside. I don't even know how you recover from something like that. After he likely questioned every life decision that brought him there, with cameras he took a look inside where he found a shark pup turning his entire bloodline into a buffet. But just like hyenas, there's a reason for this. And the answer is, female sharks are typically more run through than a yellow light. Which is why just one shark litter can have multiple fathers. Which basically means one batch of baby sharks can have up to five other sharks that help contribute. And since the goal is to make sure no one else's genes succeed except yours, the strongest shark will erase all his step-siblings from the census before they're even old enough to have a name to put on it. Which is why most sharks are born with a body count. And also why this guy never met his father. But out of all animals, it's usually the birds that are the ones out of the ones that are the ones jesus four years in a degree and i still can't speak english birds are the ones racking up the most friendly fires right out the gate and the best example is this jurassic park understudy that is definitely gonna harass my dreams tonight now full disclosure the shoebill stork isn't dangerous to people in fact they tolerate humans more than most birds they're a fan favorite for bird watchers because they'll allow humans to get close to their nests without throwing a fit and for a dinosaur whose scientific name is literally b-rex they're only a threat if you're like a fish or something in fact, the only thing that should really be afraid of a shoebill is a smaller, younger shoebill. Because the stronger, older shoebill will beat, bully, and bludgeon the weaker little brother into oblivion. And unlike hyenas who will often try to break up the fights, the sadistic shoebill parents will often watch and even encourage this behavior. The parents will only feed the strongest chick and will often refuse to acknowledge the existence of the other. In fact, the weaker chick's only purpose in life is to be a backup in case something happens to the first. That's all they are in their eyes, a plan B. Plan A stands for abort because that's basically what they do to the beta chick that they refuse to waste resources on. All while getting actively griefed by its own nest mate. Just look at how they're looking at him. They're done with his sh So as the older chick gets stronger and hogs all the attention, the Luigi of the two just gets weaker and weaker until eventually dies of a broken heart. And probably brain damage. Not to mention the whole dehydration starvation thing. But getting his skull caved in definitely doesn't help because Shoebill isn't just a name, they really got it on him. Also random fact, Shoebills often decapitate their prey. Yet, nothing about it's pretty. Unconditional love might sound cute, but in nature, it's very, very much conditional. And if the terms and conditions aren't met, the runt gets terminated. I still can't get over this picture. I don't know if they know English, but they definitely know the word pathetic. Yeah, that unconditional love thing, it's a lie. But what's also a lie is that shoebill storks aren't even real storks. This animatronic-looking paralysis demon is actually a part of the Pelicaniform Order, which puts this Five Nights at Freddy's looking-ass bird in the same family reunion as pelicans. Makes sense, they got a lot in common. I don't trust either based strictly off their appearance. Same soul sapped eyes, same murder weapon of a beak, whatever fresh hell this is supposed to be. And the same pure disregard for the well-being of anything related to them. First of all, I already don't trust pelicans off principle. Something about pelican chicks being brought up on the half-digested corpses of recently unalived baby birds makes me seriously question their place in the natural order. Watch this video if you didn't get that. But of course, pelican chicks are on the same timing as a shoe bill. It's the same story where the stronger and meaner of the two testicle swans will beat the gizzards off the weaker sibling. Sometimes while the pelican parents disregard the bullied baby and refuse to give them anything. You remember Everybody Hates Chris aka my televised autobiography? Then you'll remember Mr. Krabs reincarnated as a black father of three. There's a scene where the kids are hungry so Julius says they'll get McDonald's and the youngest can have the fries, the middle child can get the burger, and Chris of course gets a drink. With ice. It's pretty much the same thing here, except the pelican chick gets no ice to parental neglect is cold enough. And even though they technically encourage it, at least the pelican parents don't actively get involved in the physical bullying. Some parents cut out the middleman completely and just yeet the weakest chick out the nest completely. This stork chick was evicted from its nest by its own mother for the unforgivable crime of not being good enough. Not big enough, not strong enough, not worth giving a fornication under consent of the king about enough. It's survival of the fittest and there is no reward for participating. If a stork sees a chick as not worth the effort, she'll take him out herself often by breaking his neck. But since the mother doesn't really have the tools to end her child's misery quickly, it's easier and less energy to just send them free falling out the nest altogether. It's cruel, but it means the parents can focus their attention and resources on the children that actually have a chance to succeed at life. Somewhere a middle child just shed a single silent tear. It's why this is a way of life for most birds, some sharks, damn near all hyenas, and this thing. This wasp is a murderous psychopath that does what hyenas do but puts it on a perk. Like no exaggeration, this might be the worst of them all. It all starts with Capitosoma floridinum. It's a parasite that injects its eggs into a non-consenting host caterpillar. And there's two eggs, one male, one female. 
But that doesn't just mean one brother and one sister. That would just make too much sense. Instead, the eggs cloned themselves through a process called polyembryony. And when it's all said and done, there could be up to 300... Oh, f*** me, that's a comma. 3,000 larvae. And just for the record, the caterpillar's very much alive for all this. Now, here's where it gets dark. Er. While still inside the caterpillar, the brothers will actually fertilize the sisters. The problem is, there's hundreds, if not thousands of them, and you only really need one or two to fertilize them all. The rest are basically competition for the same resource, which is why some of the sisters are much bigger, much meaner, and equipped with a pair of jaws. These super soldiers go around murking and eating as many of the brothers as possible. As in, they instinctively seek them out and slaughter them, with very little, if any, discrimination. And these sister soldiers have no reproductive organs at all, meaning their only purpose in life, as in the only reason they exist, is to make sure most of their brothers don't. And the reason is because this mass male genocide means less competition in the future. There's only so much Caterpillar to go around. Speaking of which, the Caterpillar still has a pulse during all this, so he's the real victim here. And once again, since you only need a few males to keep the population numbers up, the cannibal sister soldiers just murder anything male on sight. Yeah, all of a sudden hyenas don't have it that bad. Imagine having a big sister whose primary purpose in life is making sure you don't have one. And once these sibling assassins finally end their kill streak, their life contract does not get renewed, they die as well. Because at the end of the day, if men ate was an animal, it would be this hell hornet. Yeah, that seems like a good note to end on. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring this video. And make sure to like and subscribe and all the little things I'm supposed to remind you to do at the end of literally every single video, even though you're well aware of it being an option. I don't get why that's a thing. I have never subscribed to a channel just because someone told me to do it. In fact, I'm pretty sure that telling you to do it almost guarantees that you don't subscribe. It's like dishes. If I walk past the sink and see them, I usually have no problem washing them. But tell me to do them and guess what I'm suddenly not going to be in the mood to do. So yeah, don't subscribe. If you wanted to, you would have done it already. Don't bother now. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.